In this segment, we talk about the height of a binary search tree. Remember that the height of a tree is the length of a longest path from the root to a leaf. We saw that the complexity of all the methods we discussed, contains, insert, successor, and remove, were all proportional to the height of the binary search tree. Thus, to understand the efficiency of these operations, it is critical to understand what the height of a binary search tree can be. The first question we have is, when we insert n elements into a BST, what is the maximum height of the tree? Say that we insert the integers 3, 7, 10, 15, and 22 into our tree in that order. In this case, where the keys are inserted in sorted order, our binary search tree essentially degrades into a linked list. Every node has at most one child. The height of the tree is n minus 1, which is as large as possible for a tree with n nodes. Binary search trees do not perform well in this scenario. Now let's consider the opposite extreme. How small can the height be when the tree has n nodes? The best case is when every level of the tree is completely full. We call a tree with this property a full binary tree. This property is very similar to what we had in a heap where our tree always had all levels full except possibly the last one. If the height of the tree is h, then when every level is completely full, the number of nodes in the tree is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, etc., all the way up to plus 2 to the power h. And so the total number of nodes is 2 to the power h plus 1 minus 1. Thus, a tree with n nodes will always have height at least a constant times log n, that is, omega of log n. This shows that the worst case complexity of our methods when there are n elements in the tree will always be at least a constant times log n. Here's a little puzzle for you. Say that we want to insert the seven keys, which are 3, 7, 9, 10, 12, 15, and 22 into our tree. And what order should we insert these keys so that we end up with a full binary tree? You can pause the video here if you want to think about this for a minute. To solve this, we can note that in a full binary tree, for any vertex, the number of nodes in that vert vert vertex's left subtree is equal to the number of nodes in that vertex's right subtree. For example, in this picture, there are three nodes in the left subtree of the root and three nodes in the right subtree of the root. Now, if we put key x at the root, how many keys will be in its left subtree? Well, we see that the number of keys that will be in its left subtree is exactly the number of keys that are less than x. This tells us that to arrive at a full binary tree, we first need to insert the median key in our set. So in this case, key 10. There are three keys less than 10 in, this, in our set and three keys greater than 10. Exactly what we want for the three nodes in the left subtree of the root and the three nodes in the right subtree of the root. Next, we should insert the keys that are the medians of the set of keys less than 10 and the set of keys greater than 10. Thus, we want to insert 7 and 15. It doesn't matter in which order we insert 7 and 15. Finally, we can insert the remaining keys, 3, 9, 12, and 22, in any order. And now we have arrived at a full binary tree. You can build on the idea of this last slide to show that if the keys come in a random order, the expected height of a binary search tree is order log n. The intuition is that we no longer expect that the first key to be inserted 
will exactly be the median of the set of keys, as we had in our last example. But with good probability, the first key to be inserted should be around the middle of the set of keys. For example, with probability at least 90% when the keys are chosen randomly, the first key to be inserted won't be in the 5% of the smallest keys or in the 5% of the largest keys. This means that with good probability, the number of keys in the left subtree of the root will be within a constant factor of the number of keys in the right subtree of the root. This is exactly the kind of property that we want for the tree to have height order log n overall. It takes some more work to formalize these ideas into a proof that the expected height of a binary search tree when the keys are inserted randomly is order log n, and we won't go into the details here. A proof of this can be found in Theorem 12.4 of the book Introduction to Algorithms by Corman, Lyserson, Rivest, and Stein.